Greetings, friends. My name's Cosimo. Allow me to be your guide to the sights, sounds, and smells of the Italian Renaissance. So what is the Italian Renaissance? Well, the word renaissance is a French word that means rebirth. A rebirth is a new beginning, and a new beginning it was. Between the 14th and 17th centuries, some really creative things started happening in Europe, especially in drawing, sculpture, painting, and architecture. During the 1300s, Europe rose out of the Dark Ages. Bubonic plague was a disease which wiped out a lot of the population. Italy was perfectly situated between East and West for overseas trade. The cash came rolling in. The country was made up of independent city-states. The city of Florence was ruled by a family of bankers, the Medicis. They used their vast wealth to sponsor the arts and sciences. The true impact of the Renaissance could really be seen in the visual arts. New styles and techniques emerged. The influence of geometry and mathematics could be seen as artists strived for perfection. By the mid 14th century, paintings had very flat, decorative, religious themed images. All this changed, however, with the arrival of painters like Giotto and Fra Angelico. They studied artists from ancient Greece and Rome and drew from real life. They painted with egg tempera, which was colour pigment mixed with egg yolk. They also used gold, which could be flattened as thin as leaves and could be brushed onto the paintings. Our good friend Johannes Gutenberg helped spread these new ideas to the rest of the world with his invention, the printing press. By the early Renaissance, artists painted people more realistically and placed them in three-dimensional settings. The introduction of perspective revolutionised the way buildings and backgrounds were painted. The architecture at the time was also inspired by ancient Greece and Rome. Common features included columns, pilasters, domes. The most famous dome of all was Florence Cathedral, designed by none other than famous engineer and architect Filippo Brunelleschi. These years saw an explosion in creativity. Compositions, meaning where people and objects are placed in a picture, became balanced, proportioned, perfected. The ideas for artworks no longer came just from religion. Oil paints took longer to dry and could be applied thickly or thinly, allowing artists to give their works a much more realistic feel. These artists became the superstars of their day. A true Renaissance man could be a painter, sculptor, architect, engineer, all rolled into one. Some were even inventors, like our good friend Leonardo da Vinci. Michelangelo Bonarroti was also a painter and sculptor, whose crowning achievement was the ceiling of the Sistine Chapel in Rome. So what was life like for the men, women and children of the Renaissance? Men worked as bankers, farmers or goldsmiths. Women were either silk weavers, midwives, seamstresses or nuns. Children didn't have it easy either. From the time they learned to put one foot in front of the other, they were expected to work just as hard as the grown-ups. This was a time of style. What you wore and how you wore it was very important. Women wore sweeping gowns, and every man had to wear a hat. They would show off their new threads at a variety of public and sporting events. Popular pastimes included chess, bullfighting, and jousting. Most music at the time was composed solely for the church. However, as with all the arts, new styles were introduced, and music was also made simply for people's entertainment. As with any great action comes a reaction. The perfection achieved in the High Renaissance gave way to a style called mannerism. This brought about a much more stylized approach to painting. Cooler colours were used, figures were put in more unusual settings and were painted with longer bodies. The Renaissance, which began in Italy, shook everything up and lasted hundreds of years. It led to big achievements in art and science and changed how people think. Until next time, Miyamichi, arrivederci.